the rapture itself. The rapture is what we call is an event. Uh, what I what is an event in which all who have put their trust in Jesus Christ will be suddenly caught up with Jesus. Somebody says, somebody says suddenly. Hallelujah. Somebody says suddenly they will be caught up from the earth and taken into heaven by Jesus Christ. Hallelujah, somebody. It's going to be, a, and this will occur at an unspecified time in human history. Come on. In our city. It, no one will know the exact day, time, or hour when he shows up. Amen. In other words, that this will be a worldwide evacuation, and, and this worldwide evacuation will be called the rapture in essence. Y'all understand what I'm saying? So the Bible pretty much tells us that on on that day, on that time, in a in a twinkling of an eye, in a split second, some things and uh, incredible things are gonna happen. There's gonna have a worldwide evacuation. Amen. A lot of people, millions of people who have given their lives to the Lord, every born again believer, dead and alive. Come on, let me say it. Dead and alive will disappear from the face of the earth in a split second hallelujah now this is effectively what is termed as the rapture now let me add some context to that now the rapture the word rapture is translated in the greek called hapazo h-a-r-p-a-z-o so those who are taking notes is a word called what hapazo in greek and it occurs watch this now some people say well pastor i haven't seen this word rapture in the bible well as you all know the bible is written in three languages first is the uh, in hebrew old testament and the greek is Qu uh, in the new testament is core greek and parts of them daniel and nehemiah is written in Amorite. amen no so if you look at the original Greek language, you would see you would, uh, you would see the word hapazo is used, amen? And it occurs 14 times in the New Testament, and it means to carry off by force. Come on, somebody. It means to carry off by force. So guess what's going to happen? If God is coming, I mean, not if, when he's coming, guess what? He is coming to take away his, the saints of God, dead and alive. I'm talking about all the saints of God, those who are asleep and those who are living. He is coming to take away by force. And guess what? I, I use the word, uh, this is the definition, because it's going to happen by force because Satan's agenda, the counterfeit, is always to, to, to do the opposite of God, which is to keep people in bondage, to keep people here on the earth, for them to go through to more. Amen? Isn't that for them to steal, kill, and destroy life? That is an agenda. And therefore, Satan and his cohorts will do everything within their power to keep you here on earth. But the reality is, Christ's angelic forces, the hosts of heaven, will, will take, will, will take uh, or reap, rather, the entire uh, saints of God from all over the world in a split second child of God with the command with the sound of heaven this is going to happen amen somebody hallelujah for every and let me just show you the context of how important uh, the second coming of Christ is well but every prophecy remember I said there about how much uh, 1800 prophecy concerning the first and second for every one prophecy concerning concerning the coming the first coming of jesus there are eight more concerning the second coming because the second coming is where child of god we are going to be with jesus christ forever and ever on inseparable amen somebody isn't that what the bible teaches us well we're going to be looking at it over the next few weeks so Tell somebody, tell a friend, tell a family, tell a neighbor, tell an enemy, tell somebody and invite them to come and listen to what the word of the Lord is. Amen, somebody. So you can relax, have a cup of coffee and let's move. Amen. Hallelujah. Now watch this now. Yeah, as I say, eight times uh, uh, concerning the second coming. And in context, there are 260 chapters of the New Testament containing 318 references of the second coming of Jesus Christ. The, the second coming is so important because you don't want to miss when Jesus comes. Amen. I said nobody upon the face of this world should want to miss because if you miss it, child of God, it's going gonna, it's gonna to be gloom and doom for those who miss it. Amen, somebody. Hallelujah. Now watch this now. And as I said, it's going to take place in what we call stages. The, this second coming is going to take place in stages. The first stage is what I call the rapture stage. Amen. And it is when he will come, when Jesus will come suddenly in, in the air to snatch up his own people. Come on, somebody. It will snatch up his family. Come on, somebody say his family. And this is the rapture. Amen, somebody. And, and, that, and that is going to happen, child of God, at the beginning of 
what we call of the tribulation that is to come upon the face of this earth. Amen. So you understand the rapture, the church, then following that will be because the tribulation period will start. Hallelujah. And for, for, I, and for those who are new to Christianity, those who are new to church or uh, to, to reading their Bible, those who are new to our faith in, in general, tribulation, right? really the term tribulation, it will just refer to an experience extended time of horror is going to just be an extended time of agony of devastation like nothing as you have ever been seen nothing that was ever been seen or heard or imagined like amen somebody is going to be that terrible amen somebody so the rapture really is god's provision it is god's way it is god's love for his people it is god's provision for his sins to escape that period that is to come amen somebody Hallelujah. So if I was you, that is why when my agenda have always been as a pastor and as a leader and being, being involved in ministry most of my life, I've always said to me, said to, to the Kairos family, listen, it doesn't matter when he comes. He comes right now, even before I finish the sermon, he can come. And it doesn't matter when he comes, because when he comes for those who are, who are born again, Guess what? Your destiny is sure. Come on, somebody. Amen. Your destiny is sure. You, you are not to, to worry if you're going to make it in heaven, as long as you put your faith and trust in Jesus Christ, hallelujah, somebody, as long as you live according to his word, come on, somebody, I say you're going to enter the heavens, amen, you're going to be with Jesus Christ, amen, hallelujah, so this is the, the topic that we're going to be continuing, and obviously from this tribulation period, what is going to happen, the rapture, well, again, we talk about the rapture, is going to happen for it, then followed by a semi-year tribulation, Jesus will return immediately before the world judgment so at the end of course at the end of the seven year period just before the judgment that's gonna at the end of the seven years jesus is gonna show up uh before this the, the world judgment and remove completely all those who may have put their trust those who have been left back those who may have had the opportunity to, to endure during that seven year period god is gonna come and snatch them up amen from somebody and remove them completely uh, from the earth because the bible tells us in revelation and i say that the reason why because the bible tells us in revelation chapter 3 verse 10 it says because you have uh, kept my commands to persevere and this is to the church of philadelphia and this is the word of the lord to this church he said because you have kept my command to persevere I also will keep you from the hour of trial. Come on. I will what keep you from the hour of trial. So those who may have enjoyed that severe period, he's going to snatch them up before the judgment day. And the Bible, if you read things in context, the God is God is a, a merciful God. He's a just God. And he and it's clearly stated. He said, I will keep you from the hour of trial. Come on. He will what keep you from the hour of trial. So from the judgment day, he's going to keep those who enjoy that seven year period. Amen, somebody. Amen. That will come upon the full face of the earth. Now, yes, a few important things. There are about six or seven important truths I want to share with you concerning the rapture. And number one, concerning the rapture in particular, this is the subject matter for today. Concerning the rapture, what do you find happening in, in Matthew chapter 24 and 25? Uh, that itself gives us many signs uh, that will point to the second coming of Jesus Christ. Amen. And um, some of these things will tell us for the sake of time and paraphrasing. We'll talk about wars and famine and pestilence and earthquakes uh, uh, of the tribulation. Amen, somebody. So that will come, that will happen before Jesus Christ show up uh, uh, for the judgment. Hallelujah, somebody. But the rapture is a separate event. Why? I'm going to explain to you. I'm going to prove to you why. Now, growing up in church, a lot of us being taught traditionally, well, God is going to uh, well, He's going to come again and everybody, both, uh, both save and unsave, is going to rise up again and then he's going to judge them. And that, is, to me, I think that is already more I look at the scripture is the more I recognize the rapture is a separate event from the from judgment, the second coming of Christ, where he's going to judge the world. It's two separate events. That's why I say it may, it, may, may, it may come across as the second coming of Christ, one umbrella, but it's going to happen in a sequence of events. Amen? It's going to happen in stages. But look at this now. Concerning particularly the rapture of the church, remember talking about this worldwide evacuation, what is going to happen is that there's not going to be any signs of uh, uh, um, any signs concerning the, this rapture event. Hallelujah. I said no signs will be given to prepare us for the arrival 
of the rapture. Come on, somebody, for the coming of the rapture. There's not going to be any signs given for this. It will occur at any moment. It could occur, and I'm going to show you from scripture, it can happen even now as I speak. Amen. But possibly before, the, before I even finish this sermon, it can happen. It is that. It is at any moment in time this can happen. It's going to happen without any warning. Come on. I said Jesus will return to rapture his saints and take them to heaven. It means that we must be ready for the for the, for the the Lord's return at any given time. Because let's look at scripture and I begin to uh, add to what I'm saying. First Thessalonians chapter 5 verse 1 and 2. Most of you have your Bibles. Let's look at it. First Thessalonians chapter 5 verse uh, 1 and 2. It says, now now, brethren and sisters, uh, about time and days, we do not need to write uh, to you, for you know very well that the day of the Lord will come like a thief in the night. Come on, come on. The day, what it says, the day of the Lord will come like a thief in the night. Amen. Concerning times and seasons, child of God, it is going to be a surprise event. It's going to be like a thief in the night. So the first thing I want you to know is going to happen. The rapture of the church is going to happen like a what? Like a thief in the night. It's going to happen suddenly. It's going to happen like a surprise. Event. Nobody knows when a thief is going to come to your home. Amen. Hello, let's be very practical. No one knows when a thief is going to come because a thief is coming to thief. He's coming like that. And therefore, it's going to be surprise. It's going to be a really surprise event. It's going to be a sudden event. It's going to be without even knowing. Amen, somebody. But the day, and let's look at it. But the day of the Lord, the Bible also tells us in Matthew chapter 24, verse 36, it says, but of the day and of the hour, no one knows, not even the angels of heaven, but my father alone amen and all oh, this is from the nlt version let's read from the original screen but about the day or hour no one knows not even the angels in heaven nor the son but only the father as it was in the day of noah so it will be at the coming of the uh, at the coming of the son of a man hallelujah somebody so the bible clearly does not give us specific information on the date of the on the uh, uh, the date or time of the return of our Lord, Amen, somebody. So therefore, we ought to be in a place of readiness. Hallelujah, somebody. If any man or woman of God, prophet, apostle, any faithful minister tell you they know the time or the date, I'm saying to you, run, <laughs> man. Thank God, because the Bible, you all remember something. The Bible never contradicts itself. Hallelujah, somebody. So this the rhema word is always going to be in line with the written word. Hallelujah, somebody. No, the Bible also look, look at uh, uh, verse 44. It says, therefore, you also being ready. The Son of Man is coming at an hour you do not expect. Hallelujah, somebody. The Son of Man is coming at an hour that you do not expect. So that is something that's going to happen. He's going to come like a thief in the night. Hallelujah. The, 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 the second thing I want you to understand is that it is going to happen in a twinkling of an eye. Come on. Let's look at 1 Corinthians chapter 15, verse 52. The Bible tells us here, the apostle Paul says that, uh, look at this, verse 50, in the flash, in the twinkling of an eye. Come on, somebody said twinkling of an eye. In other words, it's going to be sudden. It's going to be like literally a millisecond. And, and it's just a metaphor for how uh, that speaks of uh, of how sudden is going to happen, amen? In the twinkling of an eye at the last trumpet, for the trumpet will sound, the dead will be raised imperishable and we will be changed. Hallelujah, somebody. Pause, refer, reference to a twinkling of an eye, child of God. That is really a good metaphor for something that is going to happen sudden. Amen, somebody? In other words, the whole idea behind this event will, will occur suddenly. Somebody shout suddenly. In less than so a me. hallelujah, in mess in less than a millisecond, that is how swift this event is gonna happen. So although I say in phases, don't think naturally because with God things are like you know in a split second. The third thing I want to highlight clearly, and this is where we're gonna separate a little bit from a lot of people who may shove different beliefs. God, there, there's so much there about three belief systems right now within the body of Christ. There are those pre-tribulation, mid-tribulation, post-tribulation, uh, as it relates to uh, Christ's second coming. But again, just follow me and you will understand uh, uh my theology based on my understanding of scripture, what it says. Let's look at this. The rapture is for believers only let me explain this the rapture this event 
This first phase is for believers only. It is not for unbelievers because there's a clear distinction. The Bible clearly states that the those that in those are dead in Christ will rise. Come on, not everyone would rise. Come on, come on. That alone speaks. Not everybody that is dead is gonna rise up. Come on, somebody. And if any theologian, doctor, apostle, prophet, anybody could show me otherwise from scripture and they could explain it, then I humble myself and change my theological uh, belief. Amen. But I'm sharing to you the unadulterated word of truth. Amen. Somebody. Now, what just now? The this event is specific again for believers. In other words, it's specific, it's a family event. Turn to your neighbor and say it's a family event. Come on, it's a family event thing. This, this first phase is specific for the family. And let me prove my point from scripture. Let's look at these three portions of the scripture. The Bible says in, in John chapter 14, verse 1 through 3. 1 and 2 and 3. And I'm going to say, say this. And do not let your heart be troubled. Uh, you believe in God, believe also in me. My fa in, Watch this. My father's house has many rooms. If that were not so... Would I have told you that I'm coming there to prepare a place for you? In other words, uh, that God is speaking. Jesus here is speaking to his family members. He's speaking to believers here. Amen, somebody. He's speaking to what? Believers. He said, I will come again and receive you to myself. That where I am, there you will be also. Verse 3. Amen, somebody. Hallelujah. No, the coming again here, he's going to come again, is in the moment of the rapture. Hallelujah. It's a family event. He's talking to believers here, child of God. You got to understand the language in which he is speaking. Now, let's look at a, another scripture that affirms this, 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 this trend of thought. Apostle Paul, it says in 1 Corinthians chapter 15, verse 23, Paul Paul's affirmed the selective nature of the rapture being, being listed for only born again believers. He said, what just now? What just now? Um, but each but each in turn, Christ, the first fruit, then when he comes, those who belong to him, let's go 24. Uh, I think we have to go King, New King James. Then the end will come, what just now, when he, when he hands over the kingdom of God, the, fa the father, after he has destroyed all dominion, authority, and power. In other words, the Bible tells us, in first, let's go, go back on verse 20, 23. Hallelujah. But each in turn, Christ, the first fruit, then when he comes, those who belong to him, those who belong to him. Somebody said those who belong to him. Those who are in Christ at his coming. Let me say those who belong to him. Who, who, who belong to Jesus Christ? Everyone that is born again. Everyone that has placed there. So it is clear. It is specific here, child of God. Amen. Hallelujah. Now further to this. If you look at, at, at the, the language in, in chapter, in, in a matter of fact, 1 Corinthians chapter 15, verse 1, he opens it with brothers and sisters. He's, he's, he is talking to the bedroom. He's talking to the brothers and sisters in the faith. So again, language is important in, in understanding who he's speaking to. Amen. He's talking to believers. He's talking to brothers and sisters. He's talking to the bedroom. No matter which version of the Bible you, you use, uh, whether it be the NLT or the New King James, he's talking to the bedroom, verse 1. Isn't, isn't that so? Amen. And therefore, I want to look at verse 24. Let's let's go back to verse 24. Hallelujah. I want to share this. Then, watch this. Then the end will come. So again, he's speaking to two separate events. He's talking about verse 23. He said, those who are in Christ at the second coming, he's talking about one particular thing here. And then look at it. He says, then, understand that. He says, what then? In other words, he says that this speaks of another particular event. Amen. Then the end will come. Hallelujah, somebody. So we're talking about phases and how God Christ is going to do some things. God is going to do some things here. And finally, let's look at 1 Thessalonians chapter 14. This is this is a, a portion of scripture that is quite frequently used at funerals and so on. All right, guys. So a lot of people might know the scripture. 1 Thessalonians chapter 3, verse 13 and through 18. Chapter 4, verse 13 through 18. And Paul's main passage here on the rapture. This is really Paul's main passage here or concerning the rapture where he affirms this. He says, brothers and sisters, again, who are you talking about? He's talking about you and I. He's talking about those who are believers in Christ. Isn't that so? He says, but guess what? Uh, the second, uh, where, where we are? Sorry. All right. 
First, look at this. He opens it to his brothers and sisters. Second point here, I want to show you is verse 14. Let's go on to the next door. Verse 14, he says, they find, For we believe that Jesus died and rose again, and so we believe that God will bring him, uh, bring Jesus, those who have fallen asleep in him. What is he saying? Uh, the second he identified in verse 14, those who believe in Jesus uh, that Jesus died and rose again. In other words, he's talking about who? The born again believers. He's not talking about the whole wide world. Amen, somebody. Watch this now. Until the lesson of verse 16 next door. And in verse 16, he's describing the deceased family members, those who are uh, those who are dead in Christ. Look at the last word. And the dead in Christ, come on, somebody, will raise first. So again, look at the events. We see in the dead in Christ. It is specific. The dead has a handle to his name. Come on. The dead in who? Christ is not the dead. Come on, somebody. It's just not the dead. The dead in Christ. It is quite clear. It is quite distinct. It's a distinct separation from the entire world. Hallelujah, somebody. So it is not like everyone is going to rise again. No, it is quite clear in the resurrection. It's a separated event because the death in Christ, obviously in Christ, is not everybody. It's not everybody going to rise. It's the dead in Christ. So this speaks of a totally separate event. It speaks about the rapture. It speaks it's a family event. Amen, somebody. So those three scriptures can affirm uh, that's what am I saying. The fourth point I want to share concerning the rapture, child of God, the rapture is going to be glorious. Come on. It's a spectacular, glorious event. Hallelujah, somebody. Now, when you look at this, uh, when you look at scripture here, hallelujah, uh, in, right here in Thessalonians chapter 4, you will see here that Jesus will come. And when he's coming, child of God, uh, the Bible says he's going to come. Imagine he himself will come which means it's going to be physical it's going to be literal amen rising from the in other words he's going to get up from the throne come on and he's going to burst through the skies hallelujah somebody hallelujah he's going to come into the corridors of earth and hallelujah and guess what that is where the mountain this particular event is going to take he's going to descend in other words god is going to get up from his throne and he's going to descend into heaven's atmosphere earth atmosphere hallelujah somebody into what we call the three heavens the first heaven where the birds and uh where the birds fly as you know about the, the area the space above above the earth that's the first heaven the second heaven is referred to where the prince of persia where daniel was praying and the prince of persia was subduing and holding back the prayer and god had to release uh, michael the archangel to subdue the prince of persia so that is the second heaven, but there's the third heaven where Jesus and, and, and uh, sitting at the right hand of his father making intercession for us. So that is three heavens we're talking about. Amen. So God is going to leave from the, the third heaven and he's going to come into our first heaven in that atmosphere. And guess what's going to happen, child of God? Those that are dead is going to rise up. But I want to look and look and look at it. God himself. The glory of God. Remember, God is going to leave the... God is coming. So when God shows up, it's going to be a splendid. It's going to be a glorious. It's going to be a spectacular event. Hallelujah, somebody. It is where you're going to see God, the Father, Jesus Christ, descending into the atmosphere of planet Earth from which he rose into the heaven at the mouth of all this 2,000 years ago. So in other words, the same way he left, come on. Is the same way he's going to come. Hallelujah, somebody. But he's coming in his glory. Hallelujah, hallelujah. So that is why I said to this point, he, this is going to be, the rapture is also going to be a what? A glorious event. Hallelujah. Even when you look, when you look at the song, all you remember before God shows up, there is a song that is often released. Hallelujah. I said there's a song that often prevails before you see the manifestation of God's glory. Well, just now, look at the song that is echoed here in a, in a, um, a Thessalonians, where Paul is saying, Hallelujah. Yeah, that's it. Uh, the loud command. Watch this here. Uh, he's going to come down from heaven with a loud command, with the voice of. So, what you're going to hear, what? A loud shout, a loud song, a loud command. Watch it. The voice of an archangel and the trumpet. You're going to hear almost like three distinct songs. Amen. 
it's, it's almost it's gonna, but guess what? I personally believe it's gonna be uh, one, it is really one song in three different ways. Hallelujah, somebody, because it's, the, it's really a sound that the whole, uh, the whole world will hear. Come on, everyone across the face of this earth is gonna be a sound that 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 echoes, and only believers are gonna hear this song. Hear why? Hear why it says only believers are gonna hear that song. Imagine, let's 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 look at Eli, uh, Lazarus, for example, for, for, for instance. And I say it's a song where every believer, dead and alive, will come as the as they're going to respond to that song. Not unbelievers, only believers, dead and alive, they're going to respond to that song. Because hear this, hear this, watch this. John chapter 11, verse 43. When Jesus went to, La to Lazarus to, to raise the dead, he shouted, watch it, he shouted. He said, Lazarus, come forth. Watch this now. He said, what? Lazarus, come out. In other words, I, I, you know, there are a lot of theological views, and it's quite interesting. I wonder if Jesus didn't call Lazarus' name, what would have happened? <laughs> you know what, I mean? <laughs> what if everybody was dead? Everybody in the tomb gonna come out? Quite interesting, but you know, just food for thought. So what's gonna happen at the rapture? This is exactly what is gonna take place. He shouts. Uh, in, in other words, there's gonna be a song. This comes like equivalent to come forth. Amen. But guess what? Just as he's not going to call a million people's name, uh, you know, uh, uh, you know, whoever is passed away, like my father, uh, but I cannot come forth, you know, some of our loved ones who would have passed away, you know, uh, sister irony, come for those who belong to, you know, somebody, those who have passed on, our loved ones who are believers. He's not going to call them individual name, come forth, come forth, come forth. He can't, he's not going to, he's not going to call a million people <laughs> by name, amen. So that's why I believe, child of God, is one song, but in three different ways. And it's a song that, that is going to get, that's going to be really responsive to only believers. Hallelujah. Only those who are in Christ is going to hear and, and, and respond to that song. It's going to be a awakening song. Hallelujah, somebody. No, the rapture, child of God, this is what's going to happen. Hallelujah. It will not be for a single individual like Lazarus, but it will be heard by every believer in every grave across the world. Hallelujah. All those tombs will be empty and the resurrected believers will fly the skies. Come on, child of God. No BV, no American airline, no, 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 uh, you know, Delta can fly you to heaven. Come on, come on, sir. It's only those who believe will be able to fly this heavenly destiny. Hallelujah. It's only going to be able to take you with the, our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. So this is the analogy I, I am I am seeing here from scripture. Amen, somebody. That is why it's not going to be like Lazarus comfort. It's not going to be every million finger person calling my name. It's going to be one song but only believers are going to respond to that song hallelujah dead and alive dead and i'm not saying that she said dead 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 the dead will respond first let me let me properly say it in its context hallelujah somebody another important thing i want you to understand about this scripture is that these events are going to be uh what i consider <clears throat> sequential is going to be in such a sequential order that it's going to be the, the rapture is going to follow by those that are going to be resurrected uh, those that are dead going to be resurrected those that are alive is going to, literally going to be transformed and then there's going to be raptured away and there's going to be a reunion and a meeting of of of, of every uh, of of it's going to be a, what do you call a fellowship meeting, so to, so to speak. Amen. Uh, let me just summarize it for you so that you can get capture a few things before uh, before we, we finish this evening. Well, concerning the rapture, so we see that the Lord himself will descend from heaven and shout. We talk about that first Thess Thessalonians chapter 4 verse 16. So in the rapture, the Lord himself is coming. That is going to be spectacular. That is going to be a spectacular sight. Amen. Hallelujah. And this is in keeping with the word of the two angels who spoke to the disciple at the time of his dissension in Acts chapter 1 verse 11, where Jesus said, men of Galilee, why do you stand gazing up to heaven? This same Jesus who was taken up for, uh, from you into heaven will so come in like manner as you saw him go into heaven. Amen, somebody. In other words, Jesus is going to descend in the same manner in which he ascended. Hallelujah, somebody. Hallelujah. So in other words, this is going he's going to come in person. Come on, somebody. He's going to be a personal. It's going to be a physical coming. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. So when Jesus returned, he will bring with him all the souls. Listen to me. This is the first time. Thessalonians chapter 4 verse 14. Watch this now. He's going to bring with him all the souls of those who have 
died as believers. And here is what the apostle Paul wrote about that. He says, God will bring with him those who sleep in Jesus. First Thessalonians chapter 4, verse 14. And guess what? Next, next, ne next, next, following that now. So Jesus come through this guy. Next step, the resurrection. Those that are dead will rise. Now, the Bible tells us in, um, in verse 15, when Christ descends from heaven with a shout, he will bring a summon into of himself those who are asleep. In other words, he will summon those who are asleep, those who are asleep in Christ. Come on, let me just say, let me put a hand on it. Those that are asleep in Christ, amen? And guess what? The word that is used for asleep here in Greek is a word called kalamau, K-A-I-M-A-O, which means to sleep in death, amen? And this same word is used uh, when spoken of the... Uh, uh, describe the death of Lazarus is the same word that is used to describe uh, Stephen in Acts chapter 7 verse 6 say is the same word that is used to, uh, that it describes David in Acts chapter 13 verse 36 and guess what it's the same word that was used in Jesus Christ and for Jesus Christ in first Corinthians chapter 15 verse 20 hallelujah somebody this is why Paul Paul uh, express uh, in words such a kam, what call that kamau? Amen. I'm not sure if I'm pronouncing the Greek. Forgive me, but K A I M A O. Amen. And he describes these words. When so when when a Christian die, what happens? He he actually is asleep. Come on, come on, somebody. I said when a Christian die, he's just in a place of rest. Hallelujah. Amen. I said the concept of of death is not a, a tragic. Uh, is not is, is it should not be something. What I say as a bad thing for a believer, amen, somebody, it's a temporary sleep. It's a place where you just rest until Jesus come again. Hallelujah, somebody. Amen, somebody. I said because the Bible clearly states in 1 Thessalonians chapter 4, verse 15 and 15, the dead in Christ will rise first. So there's going to be a resurrection of the believer, those that are asleep in Christ. Not just asleep, but those that are asleep in Christ. Those who are, those saints of God who are asleep temporarily, that's what I call it, amen. So we see the second step is a resurrection of the saints. The third thing that you're going to see happen at the resurrection is a transfer for those that are alive. 1 Corinthians chapter 15, verse 51 tells us here, he said, um, not, not only will those who have died as believers be changed as part of the resurrection, but Paul again spoke of those who are alive and remain. Underline that word, those who are alive and remain. In other words, they also will be changed. So just as the dead in Christ will be resurrected, come on, come on, there will be, uh, there's a resurrection for those that are dead in Christ. Those that are alive will be changed and transformed because 51 tells us, 1 Corinthians chapter 15, verse 51, uh, it says, we shall not sleep, but we shall all be changed. Hallelujah, hallelujah. We shall all be what? Changed. In other words, there is a transformation that will take place with your physical body, with your mortal body. You will put on immortality. Hallelujah. The Apostle Paul wrote it like this in, in the book of, of uh, Romans. Hallelujah. Romans chapter 8, verse 23. He said that uh, we will we will we will change uh with this redemp uh as the redemption of our body. Amen. So in, in other words, we're gonna have a renew, we're gonna have a redeem, we're gonna have a transformed body. Hallelujah, somebody, one that is gonna fit in heaven, hallelujah, the one that will be able to abide in God's presence in heaven, one that will be free from decay, disease, uh, from death, come on, come on, that is the body that we're going to have, that is the new body, a matter of fact, next week I might talk about the resurrection body, so you will actually see the, the, the level of uh, the, this transformation and what it entails, hallelujah, so I will look at that perhaps next week, uh, same time, hallelujah, somebody, so, but even in uh, Philippians chapter 3, verse 21, um, in Paul's letter uh, to the Philippians, he described it uh, as the moment when Jesus Christ will transform our lowly body that it may be conformed to his glorious body. In other words, it will, we will put on a glorified body. Hallelujah, somebody. If, uh, the Apostle John says it like this in 1 John chapter 3, verse 23. He says, we know that when he is revealed, we shall be like him. Come on, come on, somebody. We shall be what? Like him. Somebody say like him. Hallelujah. For we shall, um, for we shall see him as he is. Hallelujah, somebody. So that is going to be distinguishing. Hallelujah. So we see what? So we talk about, uh, we talk about the return of Jesus Christ. We talk about the resurrection of the saints. We talk about the transformation of those who are alive. Number the fourth thing is going to happen is we talk about the rapturing of the church itself. In other words. 
So, so what you're going to find out before, um, and by the way, just to talk about the rapture, this is not going to be the first rapture. Hallelujah. There are at least four other documented raptures. Well, at least three that is clear and one, you know, you could, is debatable raptures. And this serves as a prototype of what is to come. For example, scripture tells us of four, well, three raptures, I would say, and that occur. And, and then one of them, let me just explain. Enoch is one of the one gentleman that was raptured in Hebrews chapter 11, verse 5. Come on. And then for those who take your notes, Elijah. Come on. Not Elijah. Elijah was another. Second Kings chapter 2, verse 11. So we see two brothers there. And Jesus Christ himself. Acts chapter uh, uh, chapter 1, verse 10 and 11. So we see three distinct uh, uh, places where men, uh, they were raptured. Hallelujah, somebody. So this is not going to be like a first time thing. This has happened before. And even the Bible talks about the Apostle Paul in Second Corinthians chapter 12. Verse 12 and 24. I think he had an open vision, an out of body experience, but that is debatable um, in, in the Christian for then. But we, I'm just saying, in essence, there are there are principles, there's a prototype. We're gonna follow is we're gonna follow the suit. Hallelujah. But what is gonna make this rapture so different is just not gonna be one by one, it's gonna be millions of people. Come on, somebody. We're gonna talk about all the saints of God, dead and alive. I mean, should I say that asleep and alive, gonna be raptured? So that is gonna be the difference between brother Paul, brother um uh, sorry, brother Enoch, brother Elijah, and Jesus Christ. Hallelujah, somebody said, so, but but there are two raptures that is still yet to come, and that is the church. That is all the, the all born again believers, the church is called the, the call out ones. They're going to be raptured, and it's going to be a major spectacular event. And there's another one that is yet to come, as for um, as the two witnesses as prophesied in, in, in Revelation chapter 11 and verse 12. I know today my feel as a pastor, I'm just giving so much information, I'm not teaching, I'm not preaching up a storm, but sometimes it's important for me to just sit down and just share uh some teaching stuff with you are amen somebody i think we need to have a well-balanced diet not all the time i mean we had enough prophecy supernatural stuff but this is important as well so that you will understand what is yet to come hallelujah somebody so in summary child of god the lord jesus will return from heaven he's gonna bring the souls for those who have already been uh, dead with him the bodies of those of those saints are uh, uh, we're going to be resurrected and changed. And then the bodies of all the other Christians who are alive and remain at his coming are also going to be changed. Hallelujah. So God is going to just, you know, God, these are events that is going to come like it or not. I always tell people they are what we call general prophecies and specific personal prophecies. All personal prophecies are conditional. Come on, come on. You got to position yourself in order to see those things manifest. Let me say that again. All personal prophecies are conditional. I can prophesy that every one of you all that you're going to uh, travel to the nations. But if you don't have a passport, guess what? You can't go in another man's country. So all personal prophecies are conditional. However, there's what I call general prophecies. Like it or not, it has nothing to do with you and I. And God's going to show up rather get say ready or not here he comes hallelujah somebody because if even if you position yourself i position myself nobody he's gonna show up when he wants to show up because he is going to return again hallelujah somebody so that is what we call general prophecies and people need to understand the difference between personal prophecies and uh, general prophecies and jesus coming again is a general prophecy guess what he's gonna come and has nothing to do with you and i he's gonna show up uh, rather you you ready or not he's gonna show up amen somebody hallelujah so this is going to happen in an instant amen somebody is going to happen in an instant somebody say in an instant so though i might take about what i might take about 45 minutes to explain all that to you guess what's going to happen it's going to happen in an instant amen somebody and obviously we talk about the rapture and then we're going to have a reunion right there so look at this paul wrote this in um thessalonians first thessalonians chapter verse 17 as we look into wrap up this evening he says and those are and watch this now Let, let's look at um you can pull it up for me uh first Thessalonians chapter 4 let's look at 16 and 17. hallelujah hallelujah uh 69 right for the lord himself will come down from heaven and with a, a loud command with the voice of the archangel with a trumpet call uh, call of god and the dead in christ will rise first After that, somebody say after that, all right, we who are still alive and are left will be caught up together with them in the cloud to meet them in the air. Amen. And so we will be with him. So we will be with the Lord forever. Somebody say a meeting. So what? We will meet with them. What just now? We will meet them in the cloud 
Uh, where am I? I'm, I'm lost. After the quarter up together with them in the cloud to meet the Lord in the air. Somebody said to meet the Lord in the air. Somebody said to, to meet, meet the Lord in the air. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. <laughs> to meet the Lord in the air. That's an important term right there, child of God. Because Paul is clearly saying, yeah, well, those who are alive and remain will be caught up with, do, with them in the cloud to meet the Lord in the air. And thus we shall all will be with him together. Thus we shall what? Be with him together. You see, Paul began he, here with the word, um, and uh, I say, and thus we shall all be together. So there's going to be a meeting. So after those resurrected, then there are those who are alive is going to meet with them. Amen. So there's going to be a meeting child of god hallelujah it connects and these these events are so sequential it's gonna happen always although i take time to explain it's gonna happen in a split second amen dead bodies reunite with their spirit hallelujah resurrected bodies re, uh, re, resurrected believers reunite with the living believers and then the resurrected believers and raptured believers will meet the Lord. Hallelujah. There's going to be a meeting of the, with the Lord. And all that is going to happen in such a, 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 a quick a quick uh, event. Hallelujah, somebody. Child of God, I'm watching the time. I want, I want to encourage some for, for those of you all today who are logged on. And it's important that, that you know that death is not the final destiny. Hallelujah, somebody. Like it or not, sometimes we have our loved ones and we have had to say goodbye to some of our loved ones. But guess what? We're going to meet them again. As long as they are born again believers, as long as they have placed their faith and trust in Jesus Christ, they are temporarily asleep. And that is the joy that we have. And this is the word that you will often hear at many funeral services throughout <laughs> any part of the world. Ago. This is a scripture that is often tend to bring hope and bring comfort because it comforts an individual. The Apostle Paul tells us, uh, uh, in 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 First Thessalonians chapter four verse eighteen, he says, "What well, therefore comfort one another with these words." And this is truly words of comfort to those who may have lost and those who may be grieving, and uh, and especially a loved one, those who are born again. I want you to know, child of God. This is not the end. This is just temporary. We're going to meet them again. Amen. We're going to meet them. We're going to meet. We're going to have a grand meeting with our heavenly father. Those that are asleep. Those that are alive. Hallelujah. We're going to be with him forever and ever. Hallelujah. You see, to a child of God, to a Christian, that is not permanent. Come on. Come on, somebody. I said that is not permanent. It is just, uh, it's just merely they're just merely sleeping hallelujah somebody but a time is coming when we and our loved ones will be reunited in what we call a rapturous meeting amen somebody when christ himself calls us out of this world or out of the graves and be with him forever in a long eternal relationship hallelujah.